Okay, so this is something I've been needing to do for a long time. I see it pop up in all these groups and uh, people finding the print settings in um, in Silhouette Studio on, for a Mac, well, any program really, but for a Mac, um, it's a little bit harder to find. So um, I have both a Mac and a PC, so I'm gonna do videos for both to show people how to get into the settings. So this is what I've been printing for um, some color tests today. Um, the first thing that I always tell everyone to do is come over here to page setup and turn on show print order. It's this little gray border there. That will tell you if your print settings are not set up the way that they should. You'll see it. Um, like let's go over here to size and let's switch it to eight and a half by eleven. See the print order sitting there? If I was to print this on eight and a half by eleven with the settings as is, it'll cut off right at that line. So it's an issue that happens all the time. So make sure you turn on that print order so you know what you're doing before you waste paper and ink. So um, since I had this set up for four by six, it's a good opportunity to show you how to change it. So for a Mac, you it, um, there's similarities here, but for the Mac, go up to File, and you need to go to Print Page Setup. That's where you choose the size of the paper you're printing. Um, you have to do it in two different steps on a Mac. For a um, PC, it's on it's all in the same window for some reason but you choose your printer and you choose your paper size here so let's change it to um, US letter and just regular US letter here um, I never print borderless um, I mean that's nice to have but it pops up and tells you that you might have a loss in quality along the edge and I have found that it ends up printing things differently, like not true to size. It kind of stretches things. And so if I want them to be exactly the size they are on the screen, um, I just go with the not borderless option. So click US letter. Here you could choose landscape or portrait. Well, we're just going to do portrait, scale it 100% so it stays the same size, and hit OK. Now that print border moved. So you know that you've got it set up for the right size. The next thing you need to do is change all your color settings. So it's in a different spot. So we go back up to file, go to print this time, and then you choose your printer. So my office jet, that's just my regular printer. I want to go to the sublimation printer. And I have some presets in here. Um, and you'll want to save presets. It makes life easier for you. But um, we're going to ignore the presets. Let's just go to default settings so you could see how it is when people usually first open it. It looks like this. And this is why it's so confusing is it looks like you don't have any options. You need to click, click the show details button and then you get this little drop down here that lets you go through all these different, I mean like tabs, I guess. So um, I just work my way through and you'll see that there's really only like two that you have to mess with, mess with but just for the sake of the video I'm going to show you here. So layout, um, I don't change anything on this one. Just leave it as is. It, it does just fine. Color matching. Color matching is important. Um, by default I believe it was set up like this. Now it's just kind of paying attention to what I did last. But you want to go over here to color sync and choose the Epson IJ Printer 07 profile. That's the deep printer that comes with your Epson Workforce printer. And um, now obviously that you might need a different profile there if you're using different ink, but if you're using ink that doesn't require a profile, um, those ones tend to be they're calibrated for Epson's default profile so that you don't have to install an additional profile. So technically when they say no profile required, there is technically a profile required, but they're using the profile that comes with the printer so you don't have to install a special profile for their ink, if that makes sense. Um, some ink, uh, Ink Owl, um, and I think Cobra, I think Ink X Pro does too, they have their own profiles. If they do, you'd want to install the profile and choose it from this menu. If you're using ink that doesn't require a profile, 
then you would choose the Epson IJ Printer 07 profile, which is the default profile for your printer. <laughs> and if your ink is set up to need Epson profiles, that's the profile you want. <laughs> I know that's all confusing, but um, on, on a PC, it doesn't let you choose, choose a profile here, but um, on, on a Mac, it does, which is kind of cool. So Epson IJ Printer 07 profile. Then we go to paper handling. Yeah, I don't mess with anything there. Cover page, no. I don't know why anybody want to add a cover page. Print settings. This is the other important one. So here's where you would choose the paper source, media type, quality, borderless, blah, blah, blah. So um, you choose which cassette you want it to be printing out of. That's the top tray or the bottom tray. I have a Epson WF7720, which means it has two cassette trays. Um, I usually just keep whatever I'm doing in the top tray, uh, but depending on what settings you're using and where it is, this is where you would choose, um, or the re rear paper feed slot, which I've honestly never even used, but I know people do it all the time. So I'm just going to choose cassette one, and then here's where you would choose the paper. Um, I've got another video explaining all the different options and why they do different things. So this is personal preference here, but um, high quality plain paper works really well. So just for the sake of this video, we're going to choose this one. Uh, print quality, you always want the quality to be the best quality available. Um, there might be people that might argue with that. Um, again, it's personal preference. I tell everybody to do test prints and decide what they think works the best for their ink. But um, I always do highest quality. I think it's kind of weird not to because you want it to be the best quality you can. So highest quality. Um, and then this is epic right here. <laughs> Sublimation needs to be print mirrored. And so if you click this little box here that says mirror image, it will uh, make it so you don't have to actually mirror any of it. Like, see how I have it? It's all right. It, that, it'll just automatically print it mirrored. So it'll save that step for you. You never have to worry about it. Um, color options. Since we chose the profile on that other setting, this one says it's been disabled. So you don't need to do anything with that one there. Two-sided printing, off, um, supply levels. These don't really matter because when you're using refillable cartridges or a CISS, they're not going to be accurate anyway. Oh look, they randomly changed. So anyway, um, the, the color matching and the print settings are the two important ones where you need to change things. Then you could just hit print. Um, the only thing that's kind of a pain with um, the Mac that I've noticed is every time I leave and I come back, it's defaulted back to my my default printer, which is my HP printer for normal everyday printing, um, and it doesn't save any of your settings. So you definitely want to go in here and up to presets, hit save current settings as a preset, and it'll say name it something. Video. Only available for this printer, yeah, because this is not something I would want on my other printers. Then you hit OK. So then you can go out, go back in, choose your printer, and then choose that, and everything will be saved for you. So uh, the presets are a big time saver, and make sure you don't forget things. Because <laughs> when you're printing a whole bunch of different things in one day, you're bound to miss a step. So save it as a preset. But that's it. Um, I highly recommend that you play with your settings and do some test printing before you decide the settings you want to use uh, for the rest of your printing. <laughs> I don't know what word I should be saying there, but um, get some fabric from Walmart, 100% polyester. It's like $1.97 a yard. Um, cut it up and press on that over and over again until you see which settings work best for your computer, your ink, your artwork, your software. It's all, it's all different. Your paper, um, it's all going to cause uh, different results. So do some tests to find out before you just blindly listen to me, pick a setting and go, and then, you know, things are weird. But I do these videos as kind of a starting point for people because, um, you know, it can be hard to try to narrow it down and 
if it works for me, chances are it'll be a pretty good solution for others, but there are variables. So just do some testing and see what works for you and save those presets.